Here are 30 stocks that I want to own forever. Some of these I currently own, some of them I don't yet. First off, Microsoft. Guys, Microsoft's a great company. It controls the entire software business, office, everything. This company was considered dead, absolutely dead, 10 or 12 years ago. It was selling for nine times PE. Guys, the current PE is 36 or 33. It was insane. That is the first company I want to own. But remember, for this company and all the ones in the future, price relative to value is very important. Stock number two, Google. Guys, Google is probably the most reasonably valued of all the Magnificent Seven. We know those Magnificent Seven. It's reasonably valued. I believe that I can justify Google's price today. However, I'm probably not gonna get an outsized return for it. So am I trying to be a little greedy? Maybe so, but that's where I stand in Google. They dominate search. The top two search engines in the world are YouTube and Google. YouTube and Google. I just saw the other day, teenagers, they, like, they spend 93% of their time on YouTube, 63% of their time on TikTok. So Google is the great one. Southwest. I currently own Southwest. And again, guys, don't own a company just because I do. It's at 29 bucks a share right now. I bought it from 35 all the way down to 21 or 22, and it's climbing back up. My thesis is the current profit margin is about 2%, but historical before COVID was 10 to 15%. So even though they have record revenues, the profit is low. But I think as long as it can get even close to that number, this is a stock that could potentially go to 60 bucks a share. But remember, don't do it just because I'm doing it. The point about all this is to teach a process, okay? So stock number four, Meta. Guys, Meta, back on November 4th, 2022, was at $88 a share, it is now at $350 a share. It's up over four times in the last one year. This company controls Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp. Three and a half to four billion of the world's eight billion people use Meta products every single day. Their cash flow has been hit because of the metaverse, but they're still generating amazing cash flow and have not maximized their revenue per user. So I love that for Meta. Stock number five, Alibaba. Again, I own Alibaba. This is all about China. This is the fear with Alibaba. It had a high of around $310 a share. It's around 75 right now. I've been buying it as it went down below 120 or 130. Now, I have dollar cost at average, very low. I'm pretty happy about that. The cash flow, this company generated $26 billion in free cash flow last year. And the market cap is like 180 billion. It's selling for seven or eight times free cash flow. That's it. How can you find a growing company in the world's biggest potential economy with the fastest growing middle class selling for single digit? I believe this company has a lot of potential. We might look back someday and say, whoa, that was a huge opportunity. Stock number six, American Express. Again, I own American Express. Don't own it just because I do. This is the ultimate in luxury credit cards. I love this company. This was a tough one because I think the value is justifiable at this price and a lot of prices going higher. This one kind of makes me go, what am I missing here? Long-term play. Um, I buy it below 150. I think it's at 185 or so right now, but I still think it could be a reasonable price today. I just look at the luxury brand. Look at people who love it. I don't see, it has way more elitism than Visa and it's growing worldwide, especially as China, these other developing countries become richer. Stock number seven, Berkshire Hathaway just lost their co-founder, Charlie Munger, RIP, still run by Warren Buffett. Now, guys, I'm not going to lie to you. This one I'm actually the most apprehensive about. I think they're going to do well, but it's going to be hard for them to outperform the market. But these guys are sitting on $150 billion in cash. If that doesn't tell you that the market's overvalued, the fact they're not willing to deploy all this cash, what else would? Now, are they conservative? Sure they are, but they're smart business people. They own about 90 businesses, full, free, and clear. They're building a position in Apple. This is, in and of itself, probably an ETF. So I like it, but at the same time, I don't know what the growth potential is for the company because it's already so large. Stock number eight. Speaking of Berkshire, Apple. Apple, Apple makes everything. They're ingrained in our lives. We love it. They spit off $100 billion in free cash flow last year. That money can be used to buy back shares. The thing I love is Tim Cook has been meeting with Warren Buffett himself to discuss capital 
allocation. This is one of the most important things that a CEO needs to be able to do, and very few CEOs understand that. They need to be say, they need to say, what are you doing with your hundred billion, and how are you going to sit there and manage that cash that the investor owns properly? For a guy like Tim Cook, his job would be to buy back lots of good, lots of shares at cheap prices. That's the key here. Even if the company doesn't grows three or four percent a year, which is probably the revenue growth the company can foresee, if you buy back inexpensive shares, you can greatly increase the earnings per share, which means you as an investor will get more and more of the company as time goes on. Stock number nine. Visa. Visa is American Express's counterpart. Ticker symbol is V. Again, huge brand. This is the credit card company for everybody. Worldwide, everything. I don't need to explain any more on that one. Now, guys, one thing I want to interject real quick before I get to stock number 10. All of these companies have great balance sheets. My goal is to buy companies with amazing balance sheets. What does that mean? That's very simple. Lots of cash, and low debt. One of our eight pillars is compares the amount of debt to the amount of free cash flow generated. What's free cash flow? It's cash from operations, less your capital expenditures. We compare that to the debt level and we want it to be low. That's very important because these companies need to have staying power. All these companies I mentioned so far, the nine companies, would you be surprised if any of them are out of business in the next 20 years? Absolutely you would. That's why I want to own them. But remember, it's going to be harder to make outsized returns because of it. Stock number 10. Ever heard of MasterCard? <laughs> I have American Express, Visa, and MasterCard. And I may, might be wondering, well, Paul, why do you have all of them? Remember, I'm only going to buy them if the price makes sense. Price relative to value. That is your job as an investor. You want to buy when price is below value. You're getting more than what you're paying for. Price is what you pay. Value is what you get. This is absolutely important for every investment you make, okay? So MasterCard, even though it's number two in the world, again, good balance sheet. Our good friend Guy Spear has MasterCard shares and he loves it. Two more companies, Home Depot and Lowe's. And again, Paul, why do you have both? Because I don't know when they're going to be selling at the right price. These guys dominate, dominate the home renovation and home maintenance um, world. And I'm okay with that. They still have growth potential. They can still open more stores, increase the, the revenue per store. These are companies I like very, very much. And again, just waiting for the right price on both of those. Now, guys, my personal favorite, McDonald's. I go there every day. Don't judge me. I get a sausage burrito and I get a large Diet Coke light ice every single morning. These guys are growing. They have their cosmic drive throughs now with the for drinks. I love it. I've been to a McDonald's in eight different countries. My goal is to see how high I can get that. There's 150 countries with a McDonald's or so. I don't think I'm going to get there, but that's key here. McDonald's, it's the everything, it's the everything fast food joint. And I love it. And by the way, they also created Chipotle, which is not one of my stocks, not one of my stocks, but they bought Chipotle from the original owner in Colorado, took it from 20 stores to 2000. Okay, stock number 14. I do own this company, Disney. Very similar thesis as Southwest. 2 to 3% profit margin when pre-COVID, it was around 10 to 15% with record revenues currently. So my goal is, if this even gets close to 10%, this is a company that has a lot of potential. I think they just reinstated their dividend. They've gone through some issues lately, but I like companies that go through issues. Remember, for a company to go from $200 like Disney down to 80, there has to be perceived issues. It doesn't just happen. There has to be perceived issues. So perception changed, and that's what changed it. I'm a buyer of Disney, sub 90 bucks a share. I think it's above 90 now. That's the way it works. Guys, one of the best software businesses out there, Adobe, Photoshop, all these great things. They're awesome. They're implementing more of the subscription model. Great company, great product, high returns on invested capital, very low debt. I don't need to say anything else about Adobe. I want Adobe long-term. Now, number 16, our good friend that just fell a lot the other day, Nike. Guys, name me another sporting goods brand. Give me a break. Under Armour, please. Adidas, come on. Puma, give me a break. Nike is the company. By the way, I just read the other day, Michael Jordan got $330 million in 2023 from his deal with Nike. Go watch that movie, Air, about Michael, Michael Jordan. He gets 5% of the revenue. They did $6.6 .6 billion in revenue off of Michael Jordan's um, brand. 
So he gets $330 million of that. Nike is a great company, great balance sheet. Again, just need the right price. What I consider to be the ultimate luxury brand, race, AKA Ferrari. Ferrari and Jaguar switching four lanes. The top down screaming out money in a thing. Did I just sound super white there? Ferrari, guys, these guys sell 13,000 cars a year at an average price of $300,000 or so. I look at it going, they did 7,500 cars four or five years ago. They could easily grow this to 25,000 cars and still have a massive wait list. I went to a Ferrari dealership recently and said, hey, I want a Ferrari. You know what they said to me? Buy a used one, come back to us, you can get on the list then. That's what they said to me and I freaking love it. Make it exclusive. Make it hard for everybody to buy. You keep your brand. They have 50% gross margin. When the average car company is something like 12 to 20%. They have eight, they have 19 to 20% bottom line margin. That's huge. Their bottom line profit after taxes, after all expenses is more than the average car company makes before all expenses, before all overhead, before all taxes. That's an incredible brand right there. Talk about luxury. Talk about elite luxury. Speaking of elite luxury, LVMH, Louis Vuitton. They have a lot of brands underneath them. Again, no discounts on their stuff. They're all about, hey, if you want it, come buy it. If you don't want it, we're going to destroy it. I love that. Louis Vuitton is a great brand. The, oh, the owner is the richest man in the world, $180 billion net worth. This, these guys are loaded. They have, like I said, they have 20 or 30 brands under their umbrella. Great company. Can't wait to own it for the right price. Another company I own, T. Rowe Price. This is a, the 401k company. 401k. These guys run the 401k business. I love it. It's going to be hit hard probably if stocks fall because they get paid on assets under management, which is what typically happens. So as assets go down and the market goes down, the revenue goes down. You saw that in 2022 when stocks fell, but in 2023, you saw a rebound. So I look at this as a very long-term play. All of these are very long-term plays. These are companies I want to own for decades of my life. Number 20, Cleveland's own Sherwin-Williams. Sherwin-Williams, this company makes paint. They cover the earth with paint. Great brand, great products, great balance sheet. Everything I love about them, they're going to be around for a long time, growing every single year as these products, even if homes aren't built, renovations are done. I like Sherwin-Williams, just got to wait for the right price. Generac, number 21. I just ordered a Generac generator. I own the stock. I'm kind of upset because I paid 84 bucks for it. It is now 130 in under two months. You might sit there and say, why is this guy upset? Because I wanted more shares. I wanted 84 to go down to 60 and then down to 50. Yes, I'm selfish. This company was at 500 and some just a couple of years ago. I think it was 510 or so. It has fallen. Does the business fallen? A little bit. Why? Because people weren't putting as much in their homes. That's fine. They make great generators at great prices. This is the company I want to own long-term. Number 22, who here is addicted to Starbucks? First off, I love their egg white bites. They're 170 calories and they're freaking awesome. I suggest it. Um, I get their low calorie drinks that my fiance makes for me, has them do. Starbucks is awesome. They're decreasing some locations, closing some off, but I love the brand itself. People are addicted to it and it's a, it's a legal way for me to own a drug company because these guys sell crack to crackheads. I absolutely love it. Starbucks is absolutely loved by so many people. I know many people who go to Starbucks every single day. Many, many people. That's how you know you're addicted and you're paying $87 a gallon for coffee or whatever it is. Stock number 23. You might not know who this company is, but you probably use it more than you think. Otis, the elevator company. <laughs> These guys do elevators and they charge a billion dollars an hour for their labor. I'm just kidding, but it's expensive as hell. Elevators will always be needed. And it's super important that the elevators are very safe and very reliable. Otis is the brand name. They have a good balance sheet. Otis is a company I want to own at some point. Stock number 24, Pool. Guys, these guys make pool products, pool everything for them. Guess what? Global warming is this company's friend. We live in Ohio and every single year, our winters are easier and easier and our summers are longer and longer. These guys own that market. Very expensive company right now. So I'm waiting for it to fall. It's selling for too high of a price, but I can be patient. That's why I like having a long list of companies to look at because my patience will help me and I put them all on my watch list and just wait for my notification to tell me, Paul, stock fell. 
Go look at it now. Okay. Stock number 25. Over talked about stock Costco. It's on Twitter all the time because Charlie Munger likes it. Therefore, everybody else likes it. Guys, it is too freaking expensive. It's $600 plus a share. I'm more interested sub 300. For those of you who think it'll never go below there, there was a time when Google was selling at 150. We liked it under 100. People said that'll never happen. It got to 83. Guys, stocks do crazy things. Costco is a great company, great customer service, great user experience. I want to own this company, but I need it to fall quite a bit from these levels based on these economics in order for me to be happy about it. Stock number 26, I own this one, Target. Target got hit hard. Same like Love, Southwest, same like um, Disney. Lower margins because of theft. They're going to figure that out. They're going to be fine. I was buying it all the way down to 105, and then it skyrocketed up to 130. I started buying at 135 and kept going lower and lower and lower, and I loved every second of it. Buying all the way down to 105. My basis, I got under 120. I'm very happy about Target, and I hope it goes down again. Stock number 27, ladies. Very few ladies watch our show, but you guys, TJ Maxx, they own a lot of different brands, Home Goods, TJ Maxx. People still go to those stores. The revenue grows. The margins are good. It's a go-to for buying closeout items, buying things that you want at a lesser price. TJ Maxx is the place to go. Every woman I know in the world, I don't care how rich they are, love TJ Maxx. Stock number 28, Brookfield Asset Management. I own this. This is a company that manages assets have high returns on growing. Their, their revenue is very stable. So even if asset prices fall, they're okay. They get a high return on the money invested in the business. I own this stock right now. Again, I repeat for every stock I own, don't buy it just because I own it. Go do your research. But this is a company I like. It has skyrocketed since I bought it. Not a big fan of that. But 29, Sprouts Farmer's Market. I already also own this. I started buying it at 32 to 35. It now got to like 49 bucks poop on that. I hate that. I want it to go back down. Growing company, great new CEO, higher margins, about 4% margin in this business versus 2% typical in the, in the grocery business. Double that margin. That's a huge difference in the, in the grocery business, guys. Their goal is to get to 1,500 stores. They're not trying to become the next Kroger. They're going to focus on high margin, high income people. That's why I love this company. And the final company, another Ohio-based company, Tim, can you guess which one this is? Cintas, the uniform people. These guys are based in Cincinnati, founded by Richard T. Farmer. Um, the uniform people, these guys, they, they'll always need uniforms. They're flying under the radar, not a sexy business, decent margins, good growth, a lot of potential internationally. I like this company. Guys, I repeat, 30 companies I want to own, but price relative to value is the most important thing. Thank you for your time.